All right, guys, this is going to be the last video in the Super Nintendo Shutter Run series. Um, here we're kind of recovering after the dumpster fire that was the uh, attempt on Drake Volcano. Good heavens, having flashbacks. Um, I think what I'm going to do... I don't know, it's probably a dumb idea. Well, that's right, I was gonna hire uh, Norbert and try out the weapons on him. Maybe? Oh, I was gonna give Norbert the partial bodysuit and see how he did. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Might be a complete waste of money and time, but... Actually, I've never tried to keep Norber alive through the final area. Um, I have tried a Nikki... A Nikki? No. Akimi... Akima? Akimi. Akimi, the the uh, best mage because she's got a big magic point pool. And then Kitsune, of course, is going to be a pain in the rear to try to keep alive, but we'll do our best. Alright, and then Norbert. We do examine. This is Mesh Jacket 1 for his armor. So what happens? Wrong button. Partial body suit. All right, now it says five. So to kick off, um, I'm going to mess these things up, but Nikki, I think is the name of the place. To kick off this part, you need to get the password from Rights Off or whatever that guy's name is down in the Drake Volcano. Let's see, I'm going to have her cast the short invisibility on herself. Hey you, stop right there. Nikki Security, where's your pass? No pass, no entry, no exceptions. You have exactly five seconds proof to pass before I move you from this planet. These guys are, um, pretty tough in the early game or even early mid game because of the amount of armor they have and whatnot. This place is actually a lot like Drake Tower, but just kind of bigger, so... Not quite as complicated and, and annoying as the volcano. Oh, and one thing I forgot to, um... The Naga scales allow you to get to armor spell. Um, 
Um, there's, I've found no reason to ever use armor spell because you just basically just use a invisibility spell. Okay. And I'm thinking of invisibility spell. Switch to that so I don't cast freeze on Kitsune. Jeez. Yeah, and this is like, okay. If you don't cast invisibility on yourself, you're just sitting here kind of like stun locked the whole time. At least they take almost no damage thanks to my armor. And there's a lot of slowdown in this game too. I never really even thought about it much, but um, the Super Nintendo had a lot of slowdown, whereas the Sega Genesis really... I don't remember any games slowing down the Sega Genesis. And the reasoning I heard, and I don't know if I'm correct, because I'm not an expert on anything really. Um, obviously, the Sega Genesis had a better um, CPU, but I've heard the reason the Super Nintendo didn't use a better CPU is because they originally thought they were going to keep the games backwards compatible with the NES. I don't know if that's true, but that obviously didn't really happen. See, the matrix systems are getting bigger and more complicated, too. Crazy. the only real reason to actually upgrade your um, body. I'm actually going to run out of hit points before I'm done in here. close call really especially failing combat elevator activated really all that just for elevator activated Computers. I think it's going to be only one computer per side right now. And let's see how we're doing here. Norbert and Kitsune are in terrible shape. The nice thing about the Aniki building is you can leave, heal up, and come back pretty well whenever you want. Whereas uh, Drake Volcano, even trying to get out, was pretty dangerous because you had to make your way back up to the top floor. Salt cannon makes these guys die pretty darn quickly. Three shots. Yeah, that didn't even take that much damage. Kitsune took more damage in the first 
two seconds as I was fumbling around trying to get her invisibility up. Then Norbert and I took total from the whole battle. All right, there's a computer over here. I'm at full health. Same layout as one of the volcano systems. Trash data discarded, data file obtained, level three node deactivated. I don't know what level three node means. Um, what's this? Withhold payment of 10 million new yen to Drake's account until we can be assured of the AI's safety. They have served little protection when there's so much at stake and icky. Let's see. The top Kitsune off. Um, this building does have you get ambushed by reinforcements from the elevator sometimes, so. No, okay. Um, otherwise, we're all doing okay. I might, after this floor, yeah, after this floor, I might actually go. Wow, I kill these guys so fast now. After this floor, I might go and rest up and save the game just to make sure we're okay. Um, especially with how easy it is for Kitsune to die, I don't really want to make, don't really want to lose the progress I've been making. Wait, is there really only two of you guys? No. There's more guys over here. Shades. These guys are annoying. I'll top off my hit points before I go in. system. I wasted more energy attacking empty squares than anything. Oops. 
think. Doesn't matter which one you do, I think. I think they're all the same. Trash data, elevator activated. Yep. All that for the elevator. Oh wow, Norbert's almost dead. So even with the armor upgrade, he's pretty vulnerable still. immune to damage. After Drake Volcano, this place is almost an anti-climax. Security on the sixth floor has been upgraded. The AI is now heavily guarded. Armitage will meet us in attempting such foolishness. The Matrix is ours to control. Sure. All right, I am going to go rest and recover. And then it might be worth it to go hire the mage Akimi or whatever her name is. Just for funsies. so good I got hit by a car three times and I didn't take any damage. some karma to use up here too. Almost maxed. Alright. And then... Just make sure we have Akimi's phone number. Oops. 
Yeah, the only reason I went in here is so I can actually use this phone. I am the mage Akimi Tudumasa. Why have you disturbed me? I ask you again why you've disturbed me. I resent the intrusions of idiots. Wow, 8,000 yen. Enough, you need not try to convince me of your plight. I shall help you for 8,000 yen, but no less. Do we meet at Daily Station? to buy an assault rifle. I should go look. Zucchini. Um, let's take a look at her stats real quick. So she's got more hit points than Kitsune, more magic points, and she has every spell in the game, Ooh, including invisibility. That's nice. Although I'm going to be faster at casting it than she'll be. So I don't really know why I brought her. Hopefully she does more damage than Kitsune, because Kitsune's little magic darts are pretty weak. And I'm going to check on the price of the assault rifle. I don't think I have enough though. is um, I believe he will shoot as fast as he always does because the NPCs are coded differently so he will do be doing more damage but shooting at the same speed and I literally have nothing else to spend my money on so and out of a sense of completion, I think I'm going to go ahead and go get the armor spell that I forgot to get last time. And then we can also kind of try out Norbert's assault rifle and a few people. See how it goes. spells now. I haven't bothered leveling up any other than 
heal, freeze, and invisibility though. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and do the last uh, stop at the hotel for a recovery and save, and then we'll go beat this game. Yeah, that was Norbert that did the 10 points of damage because I hadn't even gotten my gun out yet. Definitely won't need to retreat anymore. be wrong about Norbert shooting just as fast, but I know the sound effect at least has changed, which is interesting. Let's see, Karma. Nope. And then again, I haven't actually erased any of my magic spells. Don't really see a point. to finish the game. gets run over by a car. I actually find the crossing the street section pretty frustrating. Like I can't prevent my uh, characters trailing me from taking hits, so... I still have magic, invisibility, so Kitsune. Why? My cat's doing this thing again where he comes, meows at me, and then when I go to pet him, he runs away, so. Don't know. I don't like this new trend. Um. So basically, oh, and Akimi has no armor, but she has more hit points. So basically, um, as soon as got the lowest hit points, so I'm going to cast invisibility on her first, then Akimi, then Norbert. So every battle is going to take me 30 magic points. Jeez. And then Norbert. Man. And my cat's coming and doing their thing again. Why? You know I'm gonna catch you. It's a good kitty. Yeah, it's a little Pippin. I can't say that you show up very good on the camera. Oh, that's a good kitty. You don't need to meow and howl and run around the house and crash into things. Just be a nice chill cat. You can just be a nice chill cat. Just like this. Don't know what's gotten into that cat today.
I think a couple projects back I said uh, most of my editing time is going to go towards dealing with my cat's interruptions and I think that's pretty well turned out to be true. Let's see, I just need a top off so I'll use Akimi's big magic points pool in her heal level 4. to the other side and see what we get over there. After a top off. And let's see again, Akimi's got heal level 4, so she's better at topping off the weaker NPCs. Um, her heal only costs 8 magic points, but it's not as good. Let's see, Norbert's at full strength, so no worries there. Alright. So, Kitsune, Akimi, Norbert, and then I'll take all the damage. And again, it's better to focus fire and just kill off enemies before engaging new ones, but it gets kind of annoying when they run off screen and you can't target them anymore. Kimi taught me off again. It's bobbing my head to the music. takes out all these. Uh, the controls aren't even that good up in the system. Okay. Yeah, so at this point they just start throwing money at you. Alright, um... Good see they didn't even really take a hit. Have a Kimi top herself off. Uh -huh. Looks like no reinforcements this time. Okay, everybody else has got good health. Oh boy. Gosh, even with all that. Oh. Otto is a boss character, but he's just a troll decker with more hit points. See, they both got dangerously close to dying. And then 
Armor, it's mostly fine. Oh, this is already it. That's the AI computer. I wonder what's over on the other side, though. I'm gonna have a Kiwi top me off, too. Come on. Controls are a little frustrating sometimes. And the slowdown does not help in this case. Is there nothing over here? Okay, there's one more. It's kind of pointless. Because it's like... Literally, if I just kept going the other way, I'd, the game would be over, but... I'm just curious what's in this system. I thought I attacked. Ugh! every step. Take a lot more damage from walking into ice than attacking empty squares. Alright, what do we get? Trash data, 50,000 yen, 20,000 yen. See, that's like literally the end of the game. Like, what? What's the point? And... Okay. As I said, it's... kind of an anti-climax after Drake Volcano. This is the AI computer. I guess I use my cyber deck on it? Wait, what? I'm right next to it. There. Oh no, I'm almost down one hit point. I might not make it. What on earth? This is such a weird system. Program modified. That's it. <laughs> Such an anti-climax. Hmm. Um, apparently there's more to the system than that. <laughs> Just didn't see it. Oh, I see. There's more over here. Okay. Well, that's it. It's, it's still an anti-climax. Like, that, that, that was two not hard systems. Program downloaded. I think we're in cutscene mode now. A 
I love how these computers look like. They look like old 1950s computers. This is a cutscene mode. Armitage, I'm expecting you. He'll pay for your sabotage. Finish him. We must escape before the computer blows. So interestingly, Kitsune is the only NPC that will survive that final battle. So canonically, if you hire Norbert and Akimi, they die. Which is kind of lame in my opinion. Like, what if I cared about those two? Um, that's just a really odd decision there. Why not just let all the NPCs survive? Especially if you did well. But yeah, that's it. Uh, I know I, I talked down about this game a lot, but I really do. I've always enjoyed it. Um, the graphics are great. The music's great. The Starling is kind of meh. Um, but I love... It's kind of funny because I think um, William Gibson, the Neuromancer guy, um, he didn't really care if other people wrote things that were cyberpunk, but from what I've um, from what I've read, his one comment on Shadowrun was, "Why they put fantasy in cyberpunk?" Um, and that's where I'm going to disagree with him. I I don't think all cyberpunk should have fantasy elements in it, but well, part of what makes Shadowrun so fun to, to me is the fantasy elements. Um, so, the fact that you fight a vampire, the fact that a fox shapeshifter joins your group, you fight a dragon, um, all those weird little elements like that. Like, you hear the call of the dog totem and become a dog shaman. Like, to me, that's what makes Shadowrun such a cool game. So, yeah, that's why I like the Sega Genesis game. I love it. The Super Nintendo game, I love it. Um, as much as I had some frustrations through this game, still, I still love it. Still play it all the time. You have done well, young one. Your destiny is now in your hands. Live long, whelp. Live long. If only you'd come closer, Jake. I almost had you in my grasp. It's kind of like a weird little, like endgame montage of the people you fought and befriended and stuff. It turned out wrong for me, that's all. Why do you run? I will not hurt you, Jake. You know you can trust me. Tell me, Jake, did you guess or did you know? We could not allow you to escape. We had to stop you. Don't hurt us. Keep away. We know nothing. We just work here. This isn't the end, Armitage. We'll meet again in Shadowrun 2. Yeah, that never happened. The Shadowrunners were... Hamfist. Jenga Dance. He was a really terrible shaman. Orifis. He's alright. Dances with Clams. Never used him before. Frog Tongue. He's actually one of the best mercenaries. He's really tough. Anders. He's okay. Jet Boy. Terrible other than the free money. 
Norbert, probably the best mercenary. Kitsune. Of course, you know, I like her. Spatter is the one that betrays you, so no point in hiring him. Steel Flight, I've heard is pretty good, but I've never used him because he's so expensive. And then Akimi. It's pretty quiet around here, Sam. Remember what happened last time you said that? You have reached the end. Thank you for playing Shadowrun. 1993 Data East. Developed by Beam Software. Why is that name so familiar? All right, well, I already shared my final thoughts. Um, I'm going to pause this before it just kind of drives me crazy. Um, I already shared my final thoughts. Um, again, I love the game. As much as I badmouth it, as much as it irritates me sometimes. Um, in terms of Shadowrun, my favorite two books from the Shadowrun world are the two... F um, I was going to say two first Nigel Finley books. I'm actually not sure I didn't. I never got into Lone Wolf, but uh, Two Excess is a really good one. It's about this kind of hard-boiled detective kind of guy who gets wrapped up in a pretty big conspiracy that's very complicated, but it does a really good job of introducing you to the world of Shadowrun. Um, the other one that's really good is Shadow Play. Uh, and that one's about a kind of a burnt out Decker that's afraid to go back in. And then a young gang member who starts hearing the call of a totem to become a shaman. Both of those are really good books. And most of the lore that Nigel Finley contributed to Shadowrun, I really liked. Unfortunately, he died relatively young. I don't know why or what happened with him, but... It really makes me sad because he is, he was my favorite Shadowrun author. I know Michael Stackpole wrote a couple of the books, but as much as I like Michael Stackpole, he, I don't think he understood the Shadowrun world very well, um, at least not the version that I was familiar with from the first and second edition rules days. Um, so anyway, those are the two books I would recommend. Uh, look into the future here. Uh, I've had a request to go play Dreamweb. Looks really interesting, um, so I think I'll do a playthrough of that. And then just recently I've gotten MechWarrior 2 to run on my Windows 10 machine, and that was a huge part of my early PC gaming days. Uh, my first PC was a Windows 95 machine, and I've been in the process of trying to recreate that machine in a virtual environment, but it it still wouldn't run MechWarrior 2. It's kind of odd. Um, so anyway, I found a different way to run it just straight through Windows 10 without having to make up a virtual machine first. I'm basically using DOSBox, but anyway, uh, that was a huge part of my, like I said, my childhood, my early PC gaming days, um, kind of like middle school and early high school. Um, so MechWarrior 2 was awesome. And then, um, I actually really love MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries, which I think is going to be even harder to get running because uh, although it could run in DOS, it was terrible in DOS. It was kind of weird like that. Um, so you had to run it through Windows 95 or Windows 98, and those are pretty hard to set up as virtual machines these days. So um, hopefully I can figure out a way to run MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries as well. I really love that game, and it did a really good job of introducing you to uh, Battletech and the Fourth Succession War and the Clan Invasion. A lot of lore in those two games. And a lot of almost canonical lore. Like what you do in the game isn't canon, but all the lore that you learn through the games are canon. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm looking at. And then a lot of little side projects too, just to kind of, uh, just to kind of keep busy. Probably do a lot of short Commodore 64 type like 
projects, little games like that. Uh, Paradroid's been on my mind a lot lately, so might be a video or two about Paradroid, depending on how long it takes me to beat that game. But uh, that's going to be it for now. Hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the Super Nintendo Shadowrun game.